so uh, for this talk, I'd like to um, acknowledge funding both from Ohio Wesleyan University and from NSF uh, for get funding. So as Dr. Tree said, I was working with uh, Joseph's Injunctions and uh, Quantum Pendulo, which are in a lot of ways analogous to Joseph's Injunctions. So first of all, what is a Joseph's Injunction? It's a small, very tiny electric component um, which is made of two superconducting slabs separated by a non-superconducting uh, barrier or insulator. Um, so one thing you can do with these is you can run a current across the Joseph's injunction, and if that current is the bias current, it is what it's called. If that current is small, then this will act exactly just like a normal superconductor, and uh, there will be no energy dissipation across it. There won't be any voltage drop or anything. Um, however, uh, Joseph's injunctions have what's called critical current, and if that bias current is higher than the critical current, um, it will change and a voltage will drop across it, and the voltage will be time dependent and it'll oscillate. Um, so as this shows down here, this, is a, this I, little IV is a ratio of bias current to critical current, so this is five times. So, so anyway, uh, you can see it oscillates with time uh, across the junction. So another component that we're interested in studying is um, an electromechanical or nanomechanical oscillator, which is just a piezoelectric crystal sandwiched between two metal plates. Um, generates a voltage when it's compressed, or if there's a voltage across it, it will uh, compress itself. So this is also another very small device. Um, so one uh, setup we're looking at is a coupling here where we have a current source, and then the justice injunction and the oscillator in parallel with each other. And then you run a current across the, both of them. And because they're in parallel, the justice injunction and the NMO will uh, be forced to oscillate at the same frequency. However, the NMO has a natural frequency, and you can tune the Joseph's injunction. Uh, Joseph's injunction's voltage will oscillate at, at a different frequency depending on the bias current, um, higher than the critical current. So you can tune that frequency such that the Joseph's injunction's voltage oscillates at the same natural frequency as the NMO. And when that happens, you get a sort of synchronization resonance effect between the junction and the oscillator. So this graph here shows a um, time average voltage versus the bias current that we're running across this system for the junction. Um, and as you can see, in some times, with the junction and with the two coupled together, we get this nice step here, which um, is evidence of the synchronization between the two. Uh, where if you drive the system with a higher, if you increase the bias current that we're running across it, even though normally the voltage of the junction would increase, um, it resists changing because they are, the two are in resonance. And as you can see here in these graphs, which correspond to in resonance and not in resonance, when they're in resonance, the NMO is at its natural frequency, so it oscillates with a much higher um, voltage than otherwise. Uh, this is a, an example of classical synchronization and classical resonance because all the variables were treated um, classically. So another thing you can do classically is you can put multiple junctions in series uh, across the NMO in parallel, with, yeah, in parallel with the NMO. And then all of these junctions, let's say, have different critical currents, um, which means that given the same bias current, they would oscillate at different voltage frequencies. However, putting them in parallel with the NMO, we can force them, basically, to oscillate at the same frequency, which is a really good example of synchronization of the junctions. This graph shows the effect, how they start out, and then these voltages uh, pretty much synchronize perfectly. Um, once again, this is a classical example of synchronization. All the variables were treated classically. However, one thing we would like to do is study this system with all variables treated quantum mechanically. So, moving on to some quantum mechanics, we studied one case where we have the Joseph's injunction coupled to the oscillator um, acting as a phase qubit, which means that it has just two energy states. It can be in the higher or lower one. And the oscillator is kind of like a quantum simple harmonic oscillator with equally spaced energy levels. And this is the Hamiltonian for this system, where we have an energy term for the junction, energy term for the oscillator, coupling term, and then damping terms, which are uh, dissipative effects of the environment. So given this Hamiltonian, we have a numerical method where we can solve for the wave vector um, as a function of time. 
Uh, for more information on this technique, check out the uh, quantum jump method poster, P4, Rob Anthony's poster. Um, so anyway, this is the system we were studying, and we can solve for the wave vector, and then from the wave vector we can get plenty of interesting quantities, like um, the expectation value of the energy, which is basically a quantum mechanical version of an average. Um, so we look at the energy of the junction of the resonator. This graph here, these are some Rabi oscillations. So this graph here has no damping on it. And this is the top graph is the black one is the energy of the um, oscillator, and the red is the energy of the junction. Um, as you can see, they are exactly out of phase with each other, and they're um, they have the exact same frequency. So basically they're sharing energy back and forth, um, which is kind of an example of the two being synchronized together. And then this graph here, we add damping to just the resonator, not the junction in this case. Um, and so you can see, we use that quantum jump method that I talked about a minute ago. And so basically, the NMO loses energy through random interactions with its environment. Um, and the probability that it will lose it is higher if the energy of the resonator is higher. So that's why you get more jumps up here. However, you can see that they, the two maintain the same frequency, um, even as the uh, oscillator is dropping. So the two stay sharing energy in the system like before. So then we moved on to another system where another quantum mechanical case uh, where we looked at a damp quantum pendulum, which is analogous to a Joseph's injection. They are uh, very similar systems. So the Hamiltonian for this system is shown here, where we have an elementum operators and some other things. And then, but we would like to use dimensionless variables. So this here is a kind of scaled angular momentum operator. And this multiplied by the n um, exactly equals the previous angular momentum operator. So interesting note about this is it depends on the moment of inertia of the pendulum and the gravitational potential energy. So they're on the bottom there. So basically, as the pendulum gets bigger, um, this value gets uh, much smaller. So as that value goes to zero, we have basically a classical large pendulum. As, the val as that value approaches one or larger, uh, we start getting towards a more quantum mechanical case. So like before, we're going to solve with this Hamiltonian, we're going to solve for the wave vector using the quantum jump method, and then calculate the quantities we want from that. So this, is, um, this shows the initial wave function, which it, um, this is the initial uh, state of the vector with, um, versus the angle is spread out across the 2 pi. So it's a Gaussian. It's not a strict one spot. And you can see it's centered, though, at 0 here. And then these are the expectation values that we wanted to calculate, like angular momentum, um, the angle, dimensionless kinetic energy, dimensionless potential energy, and dimensionless total energy. So. Uh, real quick, before I talk about this slide, I'm going to show a quick mathematic animation where this here shows, like before, the initial state where the pendulum is in its Gaussian. It's a little bit spread out over an angle centered at zero. This is a slightly different case, though. It uh, doesn't have the effects of gravitational potential energy. It's just a free pendulum to uh, whirl about. So it starts out in this state, and then as we play this, it'll progress through time. And you can see how the angle spreads out here um, over time. So that's the pendulum spreading out over the two high radians quantum mechanically. And then it's initially in that Gaussian state. And so what happens is as it spreads out, the tails of the Gaussian wrap around the two pi angle that it has and interfere with each other. So you get these interesting quantum mechanical interference patterns where occasionally they'll gather themselves up again and the pendulum will be less spread out and that's when you get those higher spikes, and you can see it happening in this animation. So, back to the PowerPoint. Um, this slide shows some of this. Now, uh, we have in red the expectation value of the angular momentum for each of these graphs, and in blue the expectation value of the angle. Um, so. Sorry, the red is the angle and the blue is the expectation value of the momentum. So 
the K, once again, uh, quantum mechanical versus uh, classical. So as we move through these graphs, they get more classical. So the first one you can see in the angle these interesting interference patterns like before, where occasionally you'll have a spike as the pendulum kind of groups itself up together. And you can see up here, the angular momentum is pretty high and pretty constant. So the pendulum is just whirling around without really much effects from uh, gravitational potential energy. And this is partially due to the spreading of the pendulum and also because the potential energy term is scaled by a k. So the bigger the k, the smaller our potential well, our, our, the gravitational potential well. And so it won't be affected very much. As we move more classical, um, gravitational potential energy has more of an effect. We start to see a little more oscillations in the um, angular momentum, and the angle gets a little less uh, crazy and quantum mechanical. And then we move more towards a classical version. And as you can see, in the classical limit, as we would expect, they both act just like a physics 110 classical pendulum there. So moving on, we'd like also to look at the energy expectation values. We have kinetic in blue, total in black, and potential in red. And like before, in the more quantum mechanical case, uh, the kinetic isn't really affected. It stays, which is the pendulum just whirling around. Um, with the occasional dip and spike in potential when the pendulum get, like, coalesces at an angle away from zero. So moving more towards the classical case, once again, as expected, the pendulum acts pretty much exactly classically as we decrease the k towards zero. So finally, we added damping to this system. Um, and as you can see, as we would expect, the total energy loses uh, energy to the system through that uh, method before. This is an average over 25 independent runs, and then this value is our damping strength, and it uh, depends on the motor inertia and the gravitational potential energy also. So this was an encouraging result because it's pretty much what you would expect from adding damping to a system that uh, we don't know much about otherwise. So we'd like to see that it actually behaves a little bit well as expected. So what we'd like to do now from here is move on and do this system as shown before, uh, studying all the variables quantum mechanically, like we said, which is what we're pretty much ready to do right now, but we haven't gotten to do it yet. Um, so what we'd like to do is study this and see if we can uh, see effects of quantum synchronization. It's, no, it's actually, um, everything we looked at, it, I don't know if there's a long enough spread in, let's see, what, this graph. Uh, it's actually very symmetrical. If you can, like, it's, it's, it is really crazy, but we do notice a lot of symmetry in all the graphs we looked at that have the quantum mechanical so behavior. It, extended it, in time. It, would, it would repeat. It would repeat. Yeah, it's actually pretty periodic. You see that in the animation, yeah. those peaks reappear. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you.